Hey guys and girls, what's up? I am John Merritt from BornToProduce.com, a Steinberg certified training center. And in this tutorial, you're going to learn everything you need to get started recording instruments and then mixing those recorded parts in Cubase. This is a big tutorial. There are 40 lessons all packed with essential info and techniques on everything from microphone types, polar patterns, mic placement, setting up Cubase's control room, using Qmixes, how to approach a multi-instrument project, plus a load more, and that's just the first half. Then in the second half, we'll take all that nice shiny new audio and process it. You'll learn comping, pitch and timing correction techniques to get a super tight and flawless performance. Then we'll go through and mix each instrument and the vocals, compressing, EQing, saturating, all to bring out the punch, clarity and shine so it will sound good and sit right in your mix. Then, as if that was not enough, I'll take you through a house mix of a track we made using the recorded audio and show you the different stages of the mix, which will give you a great insight into how the mix and processing develops as the track is created. That's the short version. If you'd like more info, then stick around. In the first half of this course, we'll record three instruments, a double bass, a saxophone, and an acoustic guitar. In modules one and two, I'll give you the info you need to make informed decisions on buying or renting mics for recording in your home studio, how to set up those mics in either mono or stereo configurations, where to position them, and how to avoid some common miking mistakes. If you're hiring musicians for your projects, I'll give you the rundown on how to approach a session or multiple sessions and what sort of things you need to consider to get everything ready and get the best possible performance out of the performer, which order to get them in and a load more sort of planning tips. Of course, the space you record in will have an effect on your recording, so we'll look at your recording environment to make sure you're getting the best possible sound and how you might be able to improve it. We'll then dive into Cubase and start looking at how to easily add or remove microphone inputs and even expand your recording capabilities by connecting multiple audio interfaces together using ADAT. The control room in Cubase is incredibly powerful, but it is often a stumbling block for many users, so here you'll learn to understand it and how to use it to best advantage in your recording sessions. Using the control room, you can create different mixes called Q-mixes and then send any one of them to your choice of multiple outputs. And this is all possible within a few clicks of the mouse. There are plenty of recording modes in Cubase and you'll gain the knowledge necessary to pick the right one for the job and know how to use them for different situations. You'll learn how to use the metronome to its fullest extent, changing the sounds of it and even the timing of the patterns for very specific use cases. Lastly, we'll go through some pre-recording checks and recording best practices. So now we have all our nice shiny new audio, it's time to get to work. Step by repeatable step, I'll show you how to make it come together as a professional and polished track. With any recorded audio, comping is the first stage and it really is an incredibly powerful technique to getting one amazing performance out of lots of different recordings. Here you'll learn everything you need to know about comping vocals and instruments to get one energetic and outstanding take for the final mix. After that's done, we'll go through and fine tune the comped parts. You'll learn how to use the chord track to define the pitch correction parameters for the vocals, which makes it super easy to tune them. You'll learn how to take any performance and make it super tight using the extremely powerful time warp function in the Cubase audio editor. You'll learn to match up doubled vocal and acoustic guitar takes to get a super thick and wide sound, and even about offline processing Cubase to correct small errors in the performance. So once you have your awesome recording, you've gone through and selected the best bits, it's all been pitch and timing corrected, and you have a big freaking smile on your face because you know it's awesome. Well, now it's time to bring it all together and process and mix it into a polished radio ready gem. So in module seven, you'll learn the essential processing techniques and effects chains to be able to get the most out of any recording. 
With recording audio, you have to exert control over the dynamics and frequencies using compression and corrective EQ. Once you have that, then you can make it more punchy, brighter, more upfront, deeper, whatever is needed for your particular project. We'll look at getting to a balanced place with compression, EQ, saturation, chorus, delay, reverb, and other Cubase plugin effects. And once you have the basic processes in place, you can take it anywhere you like. Lastly, the bonus video will look at a house mix we made with the recorded parts, and we'll go through the different stages of development, giving you a really great insight into how the mix and the processing on the recorded parts developed over the course of the mix. The track that's been playing in the background of this video is actually an instrumental of that house mix, so if you'd like to be able to make similar tracks or you just want to get to grips with recording and mixing in Cubase, then this course will definitely help you. It's four and a half hours of the good stuff, and I hope to see you in the course. Thank you for watching.